Hi. Hi to everybody. In this lecture video, we are going to be studying chapter 30, and chapter 30 is about the sources of the magnetic field. As you can remember from the previous chapters, I just introduced you to the B field or the magnetic field without saying anything about the where this B field comes from. So in this chapter, this is what we are going to be dealing with. All right. Now, after doing this chapter, you will be in a position to deal derive an expression for the magnetic force between two parallel conductors and you will also be able to define the ampere and you will also be in a position to state the ampere's law and to derive an expression for the magnetic fields of a solenoid and to also define the magnetic flask and uh, you will also be able to state the Gauss's law for magnetism which is nothing else but just zero and you'll also be able to differentiate between ferromagnetism, paramagnetism, and diamagnetism. And of course, lastly, you will also be able to, to solve the problems related to the above, above concepts. Now, let us just start by Biot uh, Savart law. And Biot and Savart were two scientists who actually conducted experiments on the force exerted by an electric current on the nearby magnet. They arrived at the mathematical expression that gives the magnetic field at some point in, in space due to, to, to the current. And that mathematical um, equation is, is this equation here, which states that the magnetic field is um, mu naught i divided by 4 pi, the integral ds cross r divided by, by r squared. Now, this is the ds cross r. I, I, always want to remind you that the cross product of two vectors is always a vector. It is, it is always a vector. Right, for example, if this uh, current is moving through this uh, wire and the ds is just a small displacement of, 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 of this wire and the, the unit vector is that vector pointing to that point where we wanna measure. The, the magnetic field. Say, for example, we want to measure the uh, magnetic field there. Now, in that case, the the ds cross the ds cross the unit vector r, it will just be ds cross r that will be out out of the board. But now, suppose that you want to measure the the b field here. If you want to measure the magnetic field here at the same distance, therefore, in that case, the theta, that angle theta is not going to be this angle here, but it will be an angle between ds, ds, and, and that unit vector r. Now, in that case, that would be ds cross r. ds cross r will be that vector which is in into the board. So I, I, I always want to... To remind you that, and uh, maybe the other one last thing that I might, I might say about the, the cross product of, of, of the vectors is the following, that you remember that the direction of A, A cross B, when I have vectors like this, this is vector A, and then this is vector B, and then I have an angle between them. Now when I'm saying A cross B, A cross B, a cross B, the shortest distance from vector A to B, that's, that is that vector which is going into, into, into the board. And then we denote it by, by this, by circle and a cross inside it. But when I talk about B, B cross A, B cross A, the shortest distance from vector B to A, that will be that vector that is going to be out of, of the board. That is just going to be this vector out of the board. Now also, when you have I and then you've got J, you also have K here. Just want to show you something that if DS is in, sorry, if, if, yeah, I mean, if vector DS is in I and then you also have the unit vector in, in J, in J, therefore, therefore, if you have that vector in I and that one in, 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 in R, therefore the magnetic field, the magnetic field will be will be in, in 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 K. That is I cross J is in K. J cross I, J cross I is in I. K cross J is in minus I. That's what 
this is 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 saying so this is just a, a reminder from what you you know from your previous uh, your previous semester right now that mu naught is what we call the permeability of of free space which is totally different from the permittivity of free space and the permittivity of free space is just that epsilon that epsilon for example you remember that epsilon that epsilon when we define the electric field in the previous uh, chapters pi epsilon naught so this is a permittivity of free space uh, free space and uh, mu naught is totally different from from that and it, this is just what we call the permeability of, of free space and its value is for pi times 10 to the power 7 tesla meters per, per, per ampere right now let us also uh, compare the magnetic field uh, and electric field in terms of the distance and the direction now we we have seen and then from what i've just uh, written in the uh, board that is the in terms of the distance, the magnitude of the magnetic field varies as the inverse square of the uh, distance uh, from the, the source. And exactly the same thing happens uh, 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 to, the, to the electric field due to a point charge also varies as the inverse square of the distance from the, the charge. Now, in terms of the direction, the electric field created by a point charge is radially in the direction. However, the magnetic field uh, created by a current element is perpendicular to both the length element ds and and the unit vector and the unit vector r right now the magnetic field for a long straight conductor now if you want to know the direction of the magnetic field of a long uh, straight uh, wire conductor for example if the current is going up therefore that the, your thumb will be the direction of the current and the other fingers will be the direction of the magnetic field. For example, in this diagram, this is what you are going to have. But if the current was going down, if the current is going down, the current is going down, the thumb will always be the direction of the current. Therefore, the magnetic field will be going in, in this direction. Now, when you want to get the magnetic field at the certain distance, say r, at the certain radius r, Therefore, the magnetic field is just defined in terms of this, this equation. It's mu naught i divided by 2 pi a. And this is what I want you to always remember, that the magnetic field is just given by, by this value. And as a result, as you can see, that the more you increase that r or that a, the b field will always be coming, becoming, becoming smaller. Right. Now... The magnetic field lines for, for a loop of wire. For example, let us just uh, consider this loop of wire, this uh, circular loop of wire. And if the current is going in that direction, if the current is going in that direction, therefore the magnetic field will just be going up like that. But however, if the current was going in an opposite direction, say the current was going to your to 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 the left, if the current is going to the left, therefore the B field will be in the opposite direction now if we take this the current going that way the magnetic field is going up like that that is actually comparable to the to the magnet the north and the south pole of of the magnet for an example even in that uh, uh, a circular loop of wire therefore it seems as if this is a magnet and you've got north and then you've got south pole as as shown in this diagram because the magnetic field or the p field is exactly is exactly the same in in in, in both both cases right now let us also talk about the magnetic force between two two parallel conductors and i think you still remember from the previous um uh chapter we have seen that the 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 magnetic field the magnetic field uh, B was just given by the current times times L cross 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 P. That was the the case in the uh, previous chapter. But now in this case, when two two wires each carries a steady current. For example, I have wire one, I have wire two, and the current in wire one is what they call the I one, and the current in I two in 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 the wire number two is uh, what you call i2 now in this case the the field b2 the magnetic field b2 due to the uh, current in the wire 2 exerts a force on the wire which is equivalent to this now if that l is 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 the length of of the wire therefore i can actually write that equation in terms of of say f1 f1 is nothing else but it's just that current times l times times b but that must be 
the current in I1. And therefore, that must be B2. B2. But from the previous uh, slide, we have seen that the, the magnetic field around the, the current carrying conductor can be given by B is equal to mu naught I, mu naught I divided by 2 pi. If the radius of that wire is A, it can be written in terms of this. Now, if that is the current in I2, therefore that must be the magnetic field B2. Now, in that equation, I'm just going to substitute everything in terms of, of B2 there. And then L times mu naught, mu naught I2 divided by 2 pi, 2 pi A. And then I can rewrite this equation in terms of mu naught I1, I2 divided by 2 pi A. Oops, there must also be times L there. Now, if the question was asking you to calculate the force per unit length, force per unit length, force per unit length is therefore given by mu naught I1, I2, divided by 2 pi, 2 pi A. And what I also want to stress in this case is the fact that the force, that force, when I1 and I2 are going in the same direction, the force the answer there will just be positive. And if it's positive, it means attraction. That would be attraction. And if I1 and I2 are going in an opposite direction, for example, the answer there, the force will just be negative. The answer would be negative, and that will be a repulsion. That will be a repulsion, a repulsion force. So that's that's what I want you 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 to to know as far as this is concerned now the definition of the amperes when a magnitude of the force per unit length f divided by l between two long parallel wires that carries identical currents are separated by a distance of one meter is given by two times ten to the power minus seven newtons per meter that is the force per unit length the current in each wire is defined to be one ampere yes now if this value the force per unit length sorry if the force per unit length is just given by that, you can just substitute the values and then when A is equal to 1 meter, and then this is a constant, and then the I1 is the same as I2, therefore you can just be able to solve for, for, for I. And then you take the square root there, and then that will be, that will be just be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 amperes. Right. Now, the SI units of the charge is defined in terms of the amperes. When a conductor carrying a steady uh, current of one amperes, the quantity of charge that flows through a cross-sectional area of the conductor in one second is one, one kilo. That is the case due to, to the previous equation that we have done in the previous chapter. For example, we have seen that the, the charge is just given by the current times times T. Now, if we have one amperes there, and then one second, therefore we are just going to have one one kilo. That's what the 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 amperes is, right? Now let us also do the following a quick quiz. A loose a spiral a spring carrying no current is hanging from a ceiling. When a switch thrown so that the current exists in the spring, do the coils move closer together or move further apart or move? or not move at all. Now let us just uh, draw this so that we can understand what is happening. Now you've got a ceiling here. I'm going to plot. This is my ceiling and then I've got a spiral of a spring. I've got a spiral of a spring. Let me just throw it up until say here. Now say you send the current in that in that uh, spring. For example, I'm going to use the red color to denote the current to the side of my my spring to this side of my spring to this side of my spring the current will just be going in that direction the current will be going in that direction to this side which is very close to 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 me of of, of my spring the current will be going on that direction now for that other side which is far than me the current will just be going in that uh, side for that uh, far side of of the spring the current will always be going in that in that direction. Now, as you can see, that for the closer side of my side, the current is going in the same direction, and for the further side of the 
of this uh, spring, the current is also go going the same side. Now, if we write the equation of the force again, the force is called mu naught I1, I2 divided by 2 pi, say the radius of that spring is A. Therefore, that must be times L. Therefore, if this I and I are going in the same direction, therefore, there will be attraction. As a result, the correct answer for that uh, that quiz is 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 must be move closer to each other yes that must be a right let us also do the following uh, example of the suspending a wire two infinitely long uh, parallel wire are lying on the ground a distance a is equal to 1.03 centimeter apart as shown in the top figure a third wire of length l is equal to 10.0 meters and uh, a uh, mass of 400, uh, 400 gram carries a current of I1 is equal to 100 amperes and is elevated uh, above the first two wires at the horizontal position midway between them. The infinitely long wire carries a uh, equal current I2 in the same direction but in the direction opposite that in the levitated uh, wire. That current must be, must the infinitely wire carry what current must the infinitely long wire carry so that the three wires form an equilateral triangle right now this when you are here when you want to look this at this cross-sectional area this is what you are going to see this is what you are going this is what you are definitely going to be seeing now if we take if we choose the direction of the current to be in that in the x to be in the x to be in the x that's the direction of the current therefore we can also choose the 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 gravitational force to be in 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 z for an example i just want to plot this i just want to plot this i'm going to call this my this is my my z direction or or in the direction of k and then if the current is going and then i choose that current as going to in x or in i and then i choose this axis to be my my y axis which is nothing else but this is in just j in j therefore if i have this force if i have this force and that is the current that is going out of the board and i have this force this force the fb due to to the left left uh, wire and then this is the force due to to the right wire now i want you to see that uh, the mg the the mass the the mg is just going to be minus mg because i'm choosing this direction to be z direction therefore if I calculate the the y component of these two forces, therefore that is just going to be in 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 k direction. Now, as a result, if I take this coordinate system and then I put it here, this is what I'm going to have. This is just going to be the y components, and the y component of this force will just cancel each other. Will just cancel each other because they've got the same magnitude due to the same currents, but this one is just going to double because that would be um, the force due to this one plus the force due to 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 this one here for 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 this uh, uh, y components and that one i'm going to take it as positive so now as a result when i solve that problem this is what i'm going to have i'm going to have two there uh, because of the contribution of this uh, right and the contribution to the left and that is just going to be defined in terms of the cosine of an angle theta why the cosine of an angle theta because i know this uh angle there that angle must just be the same as that angle there which is nothing else but it's just an angle theta therefore i use the soccer tool if you use the soccer tool you can just see that this is just going to be the the cosine of 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 an angle right in that case oops that two must just go away because this two will just cancel the other one therefore that must be the the the, the force it must be 
the force which is just going to be due to, to, to the Y components. And now we want to use the Newton's second law because we know that the sum of all the forces must just be equal to zero. In fact, if that wire is going to stay there, the gravitational force and that force and this force must just be the same. And the gravitational force is just given and we are giving minus due to the fact that the gravitational force is pointing down in the negative y uh, uh, in the negative uh, z z axis therefore if you rearrange the equation and then you rearrange the for 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 i2 this is what you are going to have and then you just pluck the values and uh, not forgetting to change the grams to to kgs and then the i2 will just be given as 113 amps right now let me also introduce you to André Marie Ampere, who who was the French physicist who actually uh, discovered the electrodynamics or the, what you call the electromagnetism, uh, which is nothing else but the relationship between the electric uh, current and the magnetic fields. And uh, he also worked in some in 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 some parts of 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 mathematics. Now, what does the Ampere's law states? The Ampere's law states that the the product of B dot DS can be evaluated for a small segment uh, element DS on the circular path defined by the compass legal for the long uh, straight wire. Now, the moment you see B dot DS, what comes to a head? The moment you see B dot DS, the moment you see B dot DS, what comes to a head? It comes that that the dot product of two vectors is always is always a scalar. The dot product of two vectors is always a scalar. And that can also be defined in terms of the magnitude of B, magnitude of uh, DS, and then the cosine of an angle of an angle between them. That's that's what should 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 come to, to your head the moment you see the dot product of two vectors. Right. Now Ampere's law states that the line integral of uh, b dot ds around any closed uh, path equals mu naught i, where i is the total steady currents passing through any surface uh, bounded by the closed uh, path. So the integral of a closed surface path, so this is the integral of a closed surface path is just given by b dot ds, which is nothing else but it's just mu naught times the current through through that 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 path now ampere's laws uh, describes the creation of the magnetic field by all continuous current uh, configuration most useful for this course if the current configuration has a high degree of symmetry uh, you'll just see what i'm talking about when i'm referring to symmetry uh, put the thumbs of your finger and in the direction of of the current uh, through the Ampereian loop and uh, your, your 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 fingers uh, curl in the direction of of the of uh, uh, should be integrated around around the loop that is if the current is going up in the wire the current is going up therefore my curl fingers will just be denoting or will just be showing the magnetic field while this is just showing me the current and when it is in an opposite direction this is just going to what is happening the current is going down and the magnetic field will just be circulating around 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 that that wire now let us also uh, do this uh, quick quiz uh, sorry this was supposed to be a closed circle here now in this case rank the magnitude of of uh, b dot uh, ds for the closed path a through d in the figure uh, from greatest to to the least now in this case we start with uh, say a when we start with a a encloses how much current a encloses how much current encloses six six amps minus two why six amps minus two because this current is going out of the board and the two m's is just going into the board therefore it must be six minus minus four uh, uh, six minus two that will be for a for a we are just going to have for a in that problem we are just going to have four m's and then let us just talk about b how much current uh, does b enclose b is this uh branch the b will just be in closing how much that will be two minus one two minus one that will be one that will be one that will be uh, one m for for b and c would just be in closing how much how much c does in close c is this uh, branch here c is just in closing how much is six is one m plus five m uh, b in closing six six m and then d 
what does d enclose d will be enclosing d is which one d is just this one d is just enclosing uh, 5 minus 2 that would be 3 3 m's it will just be enclosing 3 m's now if you rearrange this that must be number one that must be number one and that must be number two that must be number two and this must be number three and that must be number four as a result that is why you are seeing your your answer to be in this in this fashion therefore b b is the is the list b b b b b is the list yes that's that's how you you answer that kind of 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 of, of questions now let us also do the following a quick quiz again now we still have to rank remember that that rectangle there was supposed to be just a circle a b dot ds for the closed loop why i am doing this uh, b dot ds is because i know that the integral b a dot ds b dot ds is nothing else but it's mu i the current through mu not i this is a constant then therefore the the dot product of the integral b dot ds might just give me a uh, mu not i a mu not i i just have to calculate the or get the current through that 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 thing but now what i want to show you is the fact that b look at b the b the closed path of b doesn't enclose any current because that current is the current that is going out but the path b doesn't close any current but all these other paths are enclosing the same current therefore that is why they must always be equal therefore that must be the answer for 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 that uh, quick quiz right now let us also do the following example for the magnetic field created by a long current carrying wire now a long straight wire of radius r carries a steady current i that is uniformly distributed through the cross section of the wire the cross sectional of the wire is just carrying the current i now calculate the magnetic field a distance r for the uh, from the center of the wire in the region where r is much is much greater than or equal to r or where r is less than this uh, big r in this case we are just going to use the uh, what you call the 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 ampere's law to actually uh, calculate the 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 magnetic field uh, through uh, through these uh different sections of of the wire and in this case we are just going to use the same analogy that we have used for the gau for, uh, for the gaussian uh, surface or the gauss law but in this case we are choosing the amperian loop we call it the amperian loop not the gaussian but this is just the amperian loop because it's from the ampere's law now in that case uh, when you do that uh, when you start with the r is greater than the small r is greater than big r when you start with r is greater than big r that will mean that your amperian loop is loop number one in that case the current enclosed there is just i we are also using the the the, the advantage of a symmetry as i told you that uh, the integral uh, because b is constant the magnetic field is constant at, at, at this point at this point at this point r therefore it can be taken outside the integral and then the integral ds is nothing else but it's just the circumference of that that wire which is nothing else but this 2 pi r now the current through for this loop the current enclosed the current enclosed is nothing else but it's just i therefore if you rearrange the equation therefore the magnetic field is just given by 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 this equation for r is greater than big r now let us also do it for r let us also do it for r r is less than that big r in that case you see now the current that is going to be enclosed is a fraction of that i because it's not the i if if i have uh, this uh, cylinder say uh, this uh, cylinder because a wire we take a wire as a cylinder if we say there the whole cross-sectional area here the current that is actually passing through the, the whole cross-sectional area the whole cross-sectional area is is just i the whole cross-sectional area we have i but now if we have chosen our amperian loop to be smaller than to be if this is my r if this is my r now i am choosing the amperian loop to be inside there that will mean that the current that is going to pass through there is not equals to i that current is not going to be equals to i the current that passes through the, the, the this is not equals to i 
I. Therefore, I will call it I prime. But the current that is passing through that R, this is my small r, this is my small r. The current that is passing through R, it is just going to be I. So I hope this makes sense. Now, in that case, I'm just going to use the argument of the current density. You remember, the current density, J, is nothing else but it's I divided by, by area. Now, if you rearrange the equation, I is nothing else but it's just J divided by A. Now, in that case, this is what you are going to have uh, for, 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 for that uh R is less than uh, big R. This is uh, what you are going to have. The pi's will just cancel, and then you will just end up with this equation. Now you know what is the I prime. I prime. You can rearrange the equation to write I prime. The I prime is just going to be given by that, and that I prime is that current which is going to be passing through this uh, this area. Now, if you go back to that equation and then you plug the values of I, because the current that is passing. The, the i enclosed by that r is less than big r is just i prime but we know what is i prime i prime is just given by that therefore this is what you are going to have for p now in this case what i also want to show you is the following that do you see now the magnetic field uh, increases linearly with r with that r but the magnetic field decreases the decreases with r for r is greater than r therefore we can definitely be able to plot the graph for 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 when r when r is less than this big r therefore the magnetic field is directly proportional to 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 r but the moment r is greater than a, a, a big r therefore the magnetic field decays decays in 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 this in this fashion i hope he, that 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 is that is clear all right good right so this is what you are just going to have for 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 this uh, two different uh, cases for r is greater than big r and then for r is less than uh, big big r let us also do this uh, uh, the example for the magnetic field created by a, a toroid. Now, a device called a toroid is uh, often used uh, to create an almost a uniform magnetic field in, in some enclosed area. The device consists of a conducting wire wrapped around a ring a torus, uh, which is shaped like a donut uh, made of a non-conducting material for a toroid having n closely spaced uh, tens of wires. Uh, calculate the magnetic field in the region occupied by the torus a distance r from the the center now if you have to do that the distance r you are just going to make your amperian amperian loop amperian loop just like a gaussian surface but this is just amperian loop you are just going to make your amperian loop uh, for, for 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 that r and then from there if you use the ampere's law the integral of the closed surface b dot ds and then the magnetic field is just constant can be taken outside now we use the advantage of a of a symmetry this is just a circumference and then that is just 2 pi r and then times mu naught times i and we have to multiply by n where n is just the number of tens because we have many tens in that case is not only a, a single loop we have many tens therefore the p field when you rearrange the equation the magnetic field is just going to be given by mu naught times n times i divided by 2 pi r good now let us also talk about the magnetic field of a solenoid now, a solenoid is a long wire wounded in the form of a helix. A reasonable uniform magnetic field can be produced in the space surrounded by, by the tens of the wire, the interior of, of, of the solenoid. Uh, you see now, uh, at the interior of a solenoid, you start to have a uniform uh, magnetic fields uh, compared to, to, the, to the outside. And the other thing that I want to, to specify here is the fact that if the current, if the current is going when you are at this point, the current, the current is going out. If the magnetic field is going in this way, the current must be going out. But when you are at the right hand side of this, uh, uh, this uh, solenoid or uh, a spring-like shape of, of, of wire, therefore, if the magnetic field is going this way, therefore, the current must be going into, into the board. Right, now the field lies 
the field lines in the interior are nearly parallel to each other, uniform distrib uh, distributed uh, closely uh, together, and this is what we have seen uh, from that diagram there. Uh, this indicates that the field is, uh, is strong and almost uniform inside 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 the solenoid. Now, when you take that uh, solenoid, if uh, the field distribution is similar to that of a bar magnet, just like we have a north and then we also have a south pole there. Now, as the length of the solenoid increases, the interior fields becomes more uniform. It becomes more uniform, for example, when you look at this one. It becomes more, more uniform. The exterior field becomes a becomes little bit weaker. This is what you are going to see when you increase the length of that, that uh, solenoid. Now, I'm just going to uh, draw the same diagram in terms of when, if the field is going in that way, the current must be going this way. And then if the field is going in that way, the current must be going inside. So I'm just going to plot that in terms of that. This is what you are going to see. This is the current coming to you and the current going into the board. Now, in that case, if you put the rectangular loop in that case, what is going to happen when you put the rectangular loop there? And then you name this uh, loop uh, different region, different re uh, region number one and region number two and region number four. But what I want to stress again here is when you go back to the equation of the, the Ampere's law dot ds is equal to mu naught, mu naught i. b dot ds b dot ds is nothing else but it just equals to the magnitude of b the magnitude of ds the cosine of an angle between them and now in that case we just have to plot the cosine graph so that we can get things correct right now this is 2 pi this is 2 pi this is pi this is half pi or 90 degree half pi and then this is 273 pi halves now in that case this is what you are going to to be using for example i want to argue uh, and, and show you that the path number two and path number four we are not going to have any contribution of the b field why because 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 that forms an a 90 degree to the b field ds and b field forms 90 degree therefore as a result that is just going to be to give us zero Right, but for the region and uh, number one of that loop, for the region number one of that loop, then we are going to be getting the, 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 the influence of the P field. But I also want us to talk about this uh, region number three. Region number three, because the P field is, the current is going in, the P field is going in that direction. Therefore, the magnetic field at that point it will just be perpendicular will be perpendicular to this uh, uh, path number three. As a result, you are not going to get any contribution to for, for, for this path. As a result, the only contribution of the B field is just going to be in this uh, region, region number one. Right. So that's that's what you you are going to have. Now, Ampere's laws can be used to uh, find the interior magnetic field of the solenoid, as, as, as I've just explained. Consider a rectangular loop with side L and parallel to the interior field and side width uh, W and the perpendicular to the field. This loop, this is just loop uh, 2 in, in, in the diagram. The side of length L inside the solenoid contributes to the, to the magnetic field. This is the side one in, in the diagram as, as, as I've explained to you. The only side that is going to contribute to the magnetic field is this side one. Side three is not going to contribute to the magnetic field inside inside there because it is also outside and uh, because of the fact that the B field is just going to be parallel. It's just going to be perpendicular and then the cosine of an angle uh, 90 degree is just uh, equals to equal to zero. Now, in that case, when you do that, this is the Ampere's law and then the magnetic field uh, for path one and path two. But what I want you to know is that for path two, it's just going to be zero because uh, that is actually perpendicular to, to, to the B field. DS or W is perpendicular to, to B. Therefore, the cosine of 90 degrees is just zero. Therefore, in that case, this is just going to be B. But what is the integral DS? The integral DS is just nothing else but the length of that 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 rectangular loop that is going to be BL. Now, in that case, because we have n number of tens in that case, therefore that must be multiplied by n. Therefore, BL is equal to mu naught ni. And then when you rearrange the equation, therefore we can be able to determine what is the magnetic field of the of of the solenoid. Therefore, it is just given by this. And when I want to define n divided by L as small n therefore that is what 
you are going to have as your magnetic field right now let us also do the following uh, quick quiz and i also want to show you that uh, b b will always be depending on on l the number the number of 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 tens the more the number of tens the more the magnetic field you you will have right now let us also do the following quick quiz uh, consider a solenoid that is very long compared with its radius i am saying very long that is very important if it is very long the length doesn't affect the b field inside all right of the following choices what is the most effective way to increase the magnetic field in the interior of the solenoid double its length no, no, that cannot be correct because it is very long. Therefore, doubling the length is not going to influence any any B field. Reduce its radius by, by half. No, the radius is not going to also influence that. But overwrap the entire solenoid with additional layer of current carrying wire. That must be correct because that will also increase the number of tens. Now, as a result, number C is the correct answer for, for that. Now, let us also... Talk about the magnetic flask. The magnetic flask associated with the magnetic field is defined in a similar way as we have done with the magnetic field. Now, I just want to remind you in terms of the in terms of the P field. You remember the P field, the 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 the, 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 the E field, the flask for 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 the electric field was just given by the integral of E. It was E dot d a. Yes. Therefore, if we define the magnetic flask, the magnetic flask must also be, because it's B here, it must just be integral, integral for, 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 for the a closed path and for the closed path. There, therefore, that must be B dot D A, and that D A is nothing else but that D A is actually a vector perpendicular is the vector perpendicular to the surface area as as shown in this in this diagram as shown in that diagram right now in that case the magnetic field uh, the b is just the 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 magnetic field in the element is, is is just b and the da is the vector that is perpendicular to that surface b is that a vector perpendicular to that surface therefore the magnetic flux is just given by by this by this by this Equation here as 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 I've not shown you. Then the unit of the flask is Tesla meter squared, which is nothing else but the Weber. Now I also want to remind you that the flask, the flask is not a vector because it's a dot product of two vectors. Dot product of two vectors is always a scalar, but the cross product of two vectors is always a vector. Right. That's that's what I wanted to 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 remind you of or or show you off and now in that case because we have seen that the flask the flask is given by the flask of b is just given by a b dot dot d a now in that case that b dot d a is so important because b dot d a is nothing else but it's just the magnitude of b the magnitude of a and then the cosine of an angle between them and remember that d a this vector d a is that vector perpendicular to the surface and from there you will just have to use the the cosine graph to get things correct this is 2 pi and then this is pi and then this is half pi pi half or 90 and this is uh, 270 or 3 pi halves now in that case this is what you are going to be using now in this case this is the magnetic flask is given by that now look here now if d a vector d a if b is parallel to the plane and if it's parallel to the plane it means that it is perpendicular to to that d a therefore in that case the magnetic flask is just zero it's just zero because d a d a this is the plane so this is my plane and then i also have the magnetic field in that direction but what is that uh, vector da the vector da is that uh, vector which is going that is the vector da now in that case this was my b field now the angle between b b and da is 90 at that point therefore this is just going to give us zero but what happens when the d a and b are at the same time if i tilt this 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 like like i make that uh, to be the b field is going in that direction that's my b field and then if the surface if i turn the surface i put the surface like that that's my surface and now the d a vector that's my b vector that's my b vector and then the d a d a is just going to be pointing in that direction that's my d a vector now in that case do you see they are 
in the same direction. Therefore, the angle between them is just equals to equals to zero. Therefore, the flask at that case is just going to be a maximum. Therefore, the flask there will just be a maximum. It will just be b times times a, right? So that's that's the next part that we are going to be to be to be doing right now do you see for example this is what is going to happen now the flask is just going to be maximum for 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 that case right now let us also do the the following quick uh, uh example and this example is for 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 a magnetic flask through a rectangular loop now a rectangular loop of width a and length 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 b length b is located near a long wire carrying a current. Now, the moment we know there is a current there, therefore we can be able to calculate the magnetic field at the certain point. And the B is into, into the board, and the magnetic field is into the board. The current is going up, therefore the magnetic field must be into the board. It must be into the board on this side. Now, I also want to show you that if the, the magnetic field for this region on your left hand side it must be out of the board because the current is going up so on your left hand side the magnetic field must be out of the board but on the right hand side the magnetic field is into the board please be be be, be very sure that you understand what i'm talking about All right now the distance between the 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 distance uh, between the wire and the closest side of the loop is C. The wire is uh, parallel to the uh, long side of the loop. Uh, find the total magnetic flask uh, through the, the loop due to a uh, current in the, in the wire. Therefore, we know the equation of the magnetic flask. The equation of the magnetic flask is just given uh, by this, B dot DA. But we know what is B. We can determine B at the distance R, at the distance R. And the distance r is just given by by this and now the da the da is nothing else if we just chop a small dr because we know we are going to be integrating from c to c plus a therefore dr multiplied by b is just going to be da now the da is just b times times dr now in that case then you can just take the constant outside and then you integrate with respect to r now this is just the same thing like when you integrate 1 over x now 1 over x 1 over x dx the answer for that is just nothing else but is the natural log of x x plus c so now you also apply the same thing uh, for 1 over r dr when you do that this is just going to be a natural log oops they were supposed to be b here for that that b for that uh, b the length because this is just the area the area is just the, this width times the that length therefore there must be p there now if you take them uh, outside and then you integrate there and then you put the limits you integrate from c to a plus c this is what you are going to have for 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 your for your for your flask right Good. Let us also talk about the Gauss's law in uh, magnetism. But the magnetic field do not begin or end at any point. The number of uh, f uh, magnetic fields line entering a surface equal the number of lines leaving the, the surface. As a result, the Gauss's law in magnetism says that the magnetic flux through any closed surface is always is always zero. Therefore, that's the Gauss's law of in, in, in magnetism. That is the flask, the magnetic flask of any closed surface the magnetic flask of any closed closed surface that's why i'm doing this cycle on that integral da is always equal to zero that is because we don't have a monopole as as i've said in the previous in the previous in the previous chapter so as a result that is just going to be given as zero otherwise if we had the monopole it was just going to be given by 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 something it was just going to be given by by something. In fact, this reminds me of 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 uh, one of the courses that I'm also teaching at the at the honors level. We just assume that there's a there's a magnetic pole. But for your case, please, this is the case because we don't have a, a monopole. Now, and I am trying to show you here uh, that the Ma the net magnetic flux through a closed surface surrounding one of the pole or any other closed surface is just zero because look at the number of fields line entering the surface is just ex exactly the same number which is exiting on the on the other end but now when we talk about the electric charge for example the electric flux through a closed surface surrounding one 
of the charges is non-zero. For example, look how many field lines are entering uh, are entering this charge. Therefore, this is not zero. Right. Now, the net magnetic flux through any closed surface is always zero. That is the Gauss's law for 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 magnetism. Now, let us also uh, define uh, the difference uh, between the ferromagnetic and the magnetic and paramagnetic. Now, the ferromagnetic uh, uh, or the ferromagnetism uh, substances are, are those substances which uh, exhibit the strong magnetic uh, effect called uh, ferromagnetism. Some examples, the good example of ferromagnetic materials are includes ions, cobalt, and nickel, and gadolinium or and dysposium. Uh, they contain permanent atomic uh, magnetic moments. You remember uh, the the uh, the the magnetic moment from the previous chapter. The magnetic moment is that mu, which is nothing else but it's just i times a, and that's a vector, right? That's the magnetic moment. They contain the permanent uh, magnetic uh, 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 moment. Now, the paramagnetism, the paramagnetic uh, substances have a small but positive magnetism. It results from the presence of atoms that have permanent magnetic uh, moments. These moments interact weakly with each other. When placed in an external uh, magnetic field, its atomic moment tends to line up with the, the field. The alignment process completes with the thermal motion with a randomized moment uh, orientation. Now, the last part of materials that I want to, to discuss with you is the diamagnetism. When an external magnetic field is applied to a diamagnetism substance, a weak magnetic moment is induced in the direction opposite to the applied magnetic field. Diamagnetic substances are weakly repelled by, by a magnet, and weak so only are present when ferromagnetic or magnetic do, do not exist. With all these uh, good people, I would like to pause here for this chapter, and here are your tutorial problems. And I would like to say, Goodbye and keep well and see you in the in the next uh, lecture video or in the next tutorials.